Hello, I'm Askar Sharif and these are the latest updates from Kazakhstan. Shareholders of the incomplete housing estate tell Samal organized a protest rally in Almaty demanding to know where is the $68 million allocated by the government last October to finish the construction. They can tell you whatever you want to hear. For the interest they get, they will enter any promotion campaigns. The bank will tell you everything. Shared construction interest holders of the housing estate tell Samal of the corporation Kuwata eager to find out where are the $86 million that the government allocated last October for the completion of the construction project. People also want to know who collects interest from this money. What prevents you from continuing assembly and building operations you are already done with audit? The action of the interest holders was attended by delegates of all organizations related to the project. Representatives of the asset funds reported that they have all the necessary means, while the director of the capital construction enterprise, Mazan Sergazin, assured everyone present that the city administration is ready to complete the construction. Unfortunately, the transfer of the project from BTA to Super Accord has been delayed due to some disagreements. Tausamal was planned to be completed and launched into operation three years ago. However, the construction was frozen by the Quad Corporation due to the financial crisis. In 2008, the city administration and the BTA Bank created the company Super Accord to revive the project. But following the forced nationalization, the bank's new leadership decided to abandon the construction. The problem right now is that Super Accord holds some debts that it wants to include in the cost of the facility through the agreement on the compensation. The bank, however, cannot accept these additional losses. Liabilities should be gone with assets, countered the Director General of Super Accord, Yerjan Islamov. Talks like this continue for already more than eight months. Shareholders were promised to be told exactly when the construction works will be restarted by the next week. People who already wait for three years agreed to give involved parties some more time, but warned if no decision will be taken soon, they will proceed with more radical measures. In their opinion, the situation illustrates a worrying tendency. Suspects in the so-called case of statisticians were pressured during the investigation, said on Monday company founder Serik Turzhanov and the former deputy chairman of the statistics agency Birlik Mindibayev. Meanwhile, the court has finished questioning the deputies of the infamous agency. Defendant Birlik Mindibayev partially retracted his earlier testimony, saying he wrote them down from the word of the prosecutor and then cited in exchange for freedom. According to Mindibayev, he was asked to slander the ex-department chair Anarmi Shumbayeva, who is currently wanted by the Interpol, as well as her former deputy Nurman Bayanov. They are suspected of pocketing of state assets assigned to conduct the national census. The defendants received offers from the prosecutors to assist the investigation and testify against the former agency chair Mishimbaeva as well as against each other in exchange for the release from criminal liability. During the Monday's questioning session, the founder of the company Geek, Serik Turjanov, stated that the investigators pressure him, just like they do all other participants of the case, denying meetings with family and proving with poor detainment conditions. Turjanov, like others, denies his involvement in the financial fraud. Two former deputies of the statistics agency and a businessman are being accused of pocketing $5 million. The new administration of the statistics agency complains that the data processing of the national census requires additional funding. Poor quality software failed to register proper information about a million of citizens during the recent census. The software package used was unfinished and recognized digits 6 as 0, 3 as 8 and 7 as 1. We had to look through the papers and input the correct data into database once again. Alihan Smailov explains that this procedure requires time and human resources. The lack of financing also played its role as the agency is frequently denied additional funding. First, the finance ministry turned away the request for additional budget resources and then Prime Minister Karim Masimov promised some financial support from the reserve funds, but never fulfilled the promise. According to Smailov, the delays with the statistics occurred due to the lack of additional $420,000 required to complete the work. In their turn, the MPs chose to attack Smailov, doubting his information and demanding not to turn statistics into a show. This reminds me of a piece by Bernard Shaw where one man says he never beats his neighbor's wife, but his neighbor does it every day. According to the statistics, however, each of them beat the wife every other day. The supervisory board of the Supreme Court rejected the appeal of the sentence against the chief editor of independent newspaper Almata Info, Ramazan Esergepov, who is now serving his term in the colony. 
The supervisory board of the Supreme Court has declined to revise the verdict to Ramazan Sergepov, the chief editor of the newspaper Almaty Info. In total, the board needed just 40 minutes to make the decision. The court declines the request of Yisergepov's attorney for their supervisory proceedings. Goodbye. Ramazan Sergepov was sentenced for publishing a correspondence considered classified by the National Security Agency. At the same time, the administration of the Plan BM sees it as a documentary evidence of a corporate raid attack with the agency's participation. In 2009, Taras City Court found Yisergepov guilty of disclosing and publishing state secrets and sentenced him to three years of imprisonment. According to attorneys, the process was conducted with numerous violations. I believe we have provided strong enough arguments concerning law violations regarding our clients. It is, however, not clear why no review has been initiated following our motions. In six months, Ramazan Sergeyev will be able to appeal for a conditional early release. His attorneys, however, doubt that the journalists will be able to use the chance. The defense is planning to appeal to the general prosecutor's office, protesting against the decision of the supervisory board of the Supreme Court. The former board chairman of Alliance Bank, Jomar Tertaev, was released from custody on Sunday. After nine months, the financial police have failed to prove that Ertaev and his former chief accountant, Abul Qasim Omarbekov, pocketed a billion dollars from the bank. Ertaev's attorney, Tagir Sisimbayev, said that banker instructed his security guards to prevent filming and also declined giving comments to the press. Jomar Tertaev was released on parole and now, together with the former accountant, Abul Qasim Omarbekov, he is being accused by the financial police of violating financial and accounting legislation in the Alliance Bank. In the past, Jomar Tertaev headed the Alliance and Eurasian banks and is still known as one of the most creative top managers in the country. Arrested on August 24th of the last year, he was accused of pocketing more than a billion dollars. Mikhail Sizov, an activist of the unregistered party Alga, has filed an appeal against the decision made by the judge of the administrative court. On May 5th, Sizov was found guilty of being an active participant of the unauthorized May Day demonstration and was fined with 10 minimal wages. On Monday, the appeals court recognized Mikhail Sizov as an active participant of the May Day demonstration. Previously, on May 5th, the activist was fined $100 by the administrative court, with Sizov appealing the decision. So far, however, the superior judicial bodies have never recalled decision made by the lower court in relation to political cases. This is clearly a political order targeting the leaders of the party Alga, Vladimir Kozlov and myself. Kozlov received a heavier sentence since it was his third administrative process this year. For me, it is first in 2010, so I got off with a fine, although I expect that I will be arrested as well during the next rally. Judge Turgumbayev, who made the initial ruling, based his decision upon the testimonies of police officers and a witness who was supposedly present near the demonstration. The witness, however, did not specify what exactly she was doing there and how she managed to pass the police blocks. Nevertheless, she remembered well Sizov as an active participant and Kozlov as an organizer. Judge Zolnuhtar Siyidov agreed with Turgumbayev's conclusions but failed to explain why, just like the prosecutor. Employees of the sugar factory have won their case against the enterprise's administration. Alexander Pagodin, Alexander Tukin and Denis Silnyagin proved their right for one unpaid leave, even if their request was not signed by the company's director. While the factory was idle, its employees had to work at another plant in the neighboring settlement, thus needing a day off to collect their payments. After the illegal dismissal from the initial place of work, the employees struggled to return their jobs for five months. Now they demand a compensation for the forced half a year unpaid vacation. The court has satisfied the claims and ruled the factory to pay around $2,000 to each of the three workers. The administration disagreed with the court's decision and will appeal it in the superior body. Rehan Toshuzhanova, the leader of the company's trade union, links the illegal dismissals with the changes of the factory's management. The new head sees it as a matter of principle, as he does not like those who fight back and stand for their rights. He needs people who would not say anything back and keep their mouths shut.